In this video, I plan on taking you through my entire note-taking process from when the lecture is first taught on the first day of class to the last day of the semester where you'll have the final exam. But from a high level perspective, I basically take information from the lecture, the textbook, and a bunch of other online resources like Khan Academy, YouTube, etc. And I compile it on into one notebook that should theoretically contain all the information I need to do well on the exam. Now, I know there's a lot of trending videos out there that you know, show that show off their fancy iPads with their fancy Apple Pencil and with all these incredibly aesthetic notes. And don't get me wrong, the iPad is really useful and incredible, but I want to make this video show that a simple, you know, $2 notebook and a $1 pencil can still help you create incredible notes and help you get really good grades. Now, there's a five-step process that I follow to go from understanding nothing in a course to while well, mastering it for the exam. And the five steps are like this. Initial note taking, uh, knowing what you don't know, filling in the gaps, compiling into one notebook, and uh, practice and active recall. Or for short, I guess a cool acronym could be IKFCP. Okay, that actually sounds kind of weird. I just came up with that. But regardless, these five steps are still really effective. And throughout this video, I'll be talking about these five steps in more detail and give you examples from my own notes on how to actually do them. And you also find timestamps for everything in the description. But before I actually get into the video, if you're new here, my name is Tamer and I'm a final year mechanical engineering student at the University of Waterloo. All right, let's get into the first step. The first step is initial note taking. Whether you have lectures in person or online, you want to start off by doing one of two things. Either print out the PowerPoint slides that your teacher or professor uh, gave you and make notes on them as your professor is explaining what's in the slides. Or if your professor doesn't make these PowerPoint slides, then bring a notebook and a pencil to class and just start writing down what your teacher is saying, what he writes down on the board. At this stage, you can't expect to understand everything that's being taught and a lot of things will go over your head. So when you're writing down notes, everything that confuses you, any question that you have, write that down as well. We'll look at those questions later, but again, for now, these notes are supposed to be messy all over the place and you shouldn't leave the lecture understanding everything. That's just not possible. And so yeah, make sure to write down questions and jot down the big ideas of the lecture. Let me show you two examples of the note taking process in this early stage. The first example I'm going to talk about is for a mathy type course. These types of courses involve a lot of equations and numbers and there's not much memorization in these courses. Specifically, I'm going to talk about my linear algebra course and I'll take you through my note taking process for that in this initial stage. If you're unfamiliar with what linear algebra is, it's just a type of math that deals with data, linear equations, and vectors. Now here are my notes from linear algebra. Specifically, we're going to be looking at this topic I learned called determinants. You don't necessarily need to know what it is for this video, all you gotta focus on is how I structured my notes. So first, I put my title on top, uh, and then I put subheadings on the side to help keep everything structured within this particular lecture. I also put dates on top, that helps keep uh, everything structured from the beginning of the semester to the end of the semester. I put stars next to things that I think are really important. Uh, specifically, I put stars next to examples. The reason I do that is because a lot of these, uh, a lot of the exam questions for these mathy type courses are just more complicated versions of these class examples. So I make sure to put stars next to them because they are really important. I put question marks next to things that confuse me, and I try to write down questions uh, at the, that I have at the time for things that confuse me. If I don't know specifically what's confusing me, then I just put a question mark. But if I do, like here for example, I wrote why is my answer different, like I knew what was the thing that was confusing me, so I wrote that down. You'll also notice that here my notes are pretty messy, everything's kind of all over the place. You know, at this stage I'm also not focused on, you know, putting color in my notes. Uh, just because I'm trying to write down notes as fast as possible, because in engineering lectures, your professor just talk really fast and they go over things really, really quickly. So you're just trying to write all the information down and you only have much time to put color on your notes. You'll do that later in the note taking stage. Now, the second example I want to talk about is for courses that have lots of facts and information that you need to know and memorize for the exam. Now, these courses don't have lots of math involved. They may have a little bit, but definitely not to the same extent as like physics or calculus. Specifically though, I want to talk about my materials science notes. For anyone that doesn't know what material science is, it's basically the study of materials like metals, plastic, or glass, and how they can be used to design and build all the things you see around us. Alright, let's bring out my material science notes. Here, this professor used PowerPoint slides to explain and teach, and I would personally print these slides going into class, and I would add notes on top of it based on what the professor says. But I'll be honest with you, I would always, always leave this class more confused than when I came in. So if you're in the same boat, that's completely normal, don't worry about it. That's extremely common for engineering or even just university in general. 
So anyways, here this specific topic is called corrosion and degradation. I would always put stars next to things that professor said is really important. I'd add questions for things that I didn't understand at the time. I'd also add notes for things that the professor is saying that aren't necessarily in the actual slides, like you see here. A cool thing I actually learned from this lecture uh, that I still remember today was that the Statue of Liberty wasn't actually meant to be green. When it was first built and when it was first designed and built, it was meant to be at, it's made out of copper and it's meant to have this brownish color. But over the time, that copper reacted with the air around it and it changed its color from that brownish color to the green color that we see today. So pretty cool stuff. Anyways, now that we have all these rough notes, we'll take it one step further after the lecture by going through these notes and writing down questions or asking questions about specific things that confuse us that we didn't get a chance to write down during the actual lecture. Also for the math type courses, it's a good time to also try some of the practice questions that involve numbers and equations. The reason this step is so important is because it allows you to know what you don't know. So when you start studying, you know where to begin because your immediate goal should be to answer these questions. For example, let's look at my linear algebra notes. Some of the questions that I have here is like, what's a cofactor? Which line should cancel out? What would happen if all these numbers are zero? You know, these are questions that I used to be able to know where I should start when it comes to studying. Also, let's look at my material science notes. Here in this lecture, uh, some of the questions I asked myself is, you know, what's corrosion and degradation? How are they different? You know, this diagram right here, what, is, what exactly does this mean? These equations, what do they mean? And what do they represent? So again, this step is all about coming up with questions and realizing and understanding what I don't know. Now that we have all these questions, it's time to start looking for answers and fill in the gaps. So I look at all my resources like the lecture content or my lecture notes, the textbook, other online resources like on Academy or YouTube videos, and I collect bits and pieces of information from all these resources. For example, there was a particular topic that confused me. I think the topic was called like Bodhi Plots. The name actually sounds kind of weird. Uh, but anyways, I couldn't understand anything that the professor was saying and the textbook was really bad at explaining it. And I found this YouTube channel that explained it so freaking well and I was able to do really well on the exam just because of them. So shout out to them. Anyways, now that we have all these pieces of information, it still kind of feels kind of messy and all over the place in my head. So I take all these resources and I put them into one Notebook, which brings me to step four, compile into one notebook. Ideally, everything you need to know for your exam should be in this notebook. I kind of like to call it super notes. Honestly, that sounds a lot cooler in my head. It's kind of lame when I say it out loud. But anyways, let's look at my linear algebra notes. Uh, here you'll see that these notes is where I kind of start color coding. I have my titles in red. In blue, I have like steps I need to follow to be able to solve a particular question. I also have important remarks in black. My examples that I use uh, to sort of learn from to be able to do actual practice questions, I put in gray and you'll see that in these notes, there was a lot of things that confused me at the time uh, when I was first learning them in the lecture, but I make sure to answer all these questions in my notes. Uh, some of the answers I got from YouTube, other answers I got from the textbook. For example, when I was reading the textbook, I liked how they structure things and how they organize them in terms of the titles they use. So I copied that into my own notes. And again, the main purpose here is sort of when I have clear and organized notes, it helps me understand things better and my mind is just clear when it comes to understanding the concepts of that particular course. All right, now let's also have a look at my material science notes. At this stage, you'll see that I color coded a lot of these notes. Uh, the reason I do that is because it helps me sort of remember things, especially for the courses that, you know, require you to spit out facts on the exam. It's particularly here, I want to, like this topic of annealing was something that really confused me during the lectures. And if anyone familiar with what that is, it's basically a process where you take metals and you make them more flexible and less hard so you can bend them into whatever shape you want. But anyways, that topic really confused me in class. And so I found these steps in the textbook that explain it really, really well. So I included them here. I also found these diagrams uh, from the internet that helped me visualize what was happening. And so I printed them out and I put them in my notebook. And the reason I printed them out was because I can't really draw too well. So it was just easier for me to print them out than I actually have to draw it by hand. And so yeah, basically I combined information from the textbook, information I found online into this one notebook. So on the exam, I can explain it really, really well and be able to draw these diagrams with no problem. At the end of the day, the goal of making these notes is to basically take all the information from a bunch of sources and put them all into one place. Because when you do that and you have organized notes, your mind is organized and you feel like you have control over everything that's being taught in the course. Now that you have all this incredible information that should have cleared up any confusion and answered all your questions, 
and should technically have everything you need to know for the exam in this one notebook, it's time to start applying it. And I do that by implementing a method called Active Recall for courses that have lots of memorization and facts that you need to remember. I do that in two steps. First, I go through all the questions that I wrote down earlier. For example, a question I wrote was like, what are the different phases of steel? I'll answer that question out loud to myself. Interestingly though, some of the questions I actually wrote in my lecture ended up being on the exam. So really, really useful strategy. Another thing I do is I'll take my super notes and I will go through every concept and I'll explain them to myself out loud in my room as I'm walking around my room. And this really helps, you know, solidify all this information uh, in my head. So I remember it for the exam. I start off by doing this process of answering questions that I wrote earlier and going through these notes and explaining these concepts to myself out loud, usually every few days. But then as the exam day gets closer, I do this process basically every single day. And the reason I do that is because of this concept called the forgetting curve. When you try to remember something, it will stay in your head at first, but as time goes on, you'll begin to forget it. According to the forgetting curve, which is backed by science, after just one day of studying something or trying to remember something, you forget 50% of it just after one day. And after three days, you only remember 20% of it. And so for that reason, it's really important to be reviewing these questions and going through these notes and explaining them to yourself out loud every single day so it stays in your head. Because when you do that, the forgetting curve changes and here's what it looks like. You'll see that it takes more time to forget what it is you wanna remember and eventually it'll get stuck in your long-term memory. However, for courses that are like mathy, like physics, calculus, linear algebra, you shouldn't be memorizing stuff. Instead, you should be doing practice questions and as many practice questions as you can. Your professor should probably have assigned you some practice questions that you could do, but if they didn't, you can also grab your textbook and do practice questions from there. For example, for linear algebra, I would grab the textbook and I'd go at the back of every chapter and I'd do the practice questions from there. For example, here, this is the back of chapter 4.2. I do all these questions that you see here uh, just so I can understand what's going on in the course. It's just meant to reinforce the stuff that I already wrote in my notebook. And the reason this step is so important is because in the exam, a lot of the questions on the exam are going to come from this and are going to be very similar to what you see here. So it's much, much more beneficial for you for these mathy courses to do these practice questions than to just memorize information. I'd usually answer these practice problem questions in a different notebook just so I can refer back to it when I need it. And for every question, I make sure that I can solve it and I fully understand it without looking at the solution. So I'll look at a question and if I can answer without looking at the solution and I fully understand it for the first time when I do it, then I'll just move on and do other questions. But if I don't understand it and it really confused me and I had to look at the solution to figure it out, I put a star next to it. And when doing so, I know that I should come back to it either in a few days or in a week and try to do it again. And if I can then do it without looking at the solution, then I'll move on to other questions. And I know that that question I fully understand. But yeah, that's it. These are the five steps that I go through when it comes to making notes. That helps me do well in school, helps me get good grades and understand everything I need to understand for the exam. Again, to summarize, the best way to study is to understand the type of course you're taking. For mathy type courses like physics or calculus, it's you know best to do as much practice questions as possible and understand the concept behind every question. But for memorization type courses, for courses like history or biology, it's better to make summary notes and read them out loud and implement active recall to be able to remember all the stuff that you're trying to remember for the exam. And here's a really cool illustration that I found on Pinterest that explains active recall really, really well. First, new information enters your brain. It gets stored in the working memory for only a few seconds. From the working memory, it moves to the short-term memory. If this information isn't recalled, it will be lost forever. But from the short-term memory, if it's recalled enough times, which could be, depending on the person, could be even up to 100 times, it will move to the long-term memory, and you'll be able to remember for a long time and do all your exams. That's it for this video. I hope my five-step note-taking process brought you value. If it did, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.